And, there, and the first feature I mixed, I mixed at our transa, and it was called You Can't See Around Corners. Which was um, one of the very first, you know, of the resurgence of the Australian film industry in sure. the 70s. Sure, sure. One of the ones that did that. That, was, that, would, that would have been, um, I think, very late 60s, I reckon, that was May. And it was, it was directed by a fellow who, who normally did commercials, a Frenchman, Jacques Devin. Um, and it was a TV series with a very beautiful young girl in it who became, she was Pat the bitch in... Um, that in long, Prisoner? Yeah. No, 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 before that. Um, uh, Rowena Wallace. Right. She was a beautiful young lady then. She was the star of this um, You Can't See Around Corners. So that was, that was about, I think, about six or eight reels. But that was the first one I did that actually went to the cinema. And I'm actually looking at your IMDb. IMDb mm. has you listed as doing 91... Yeah. Film and TV projects, and that's probably half. I actually did. I actually did 150 feature films. Right, because yeah. Can't See Around Corners isn't even listed here, so sure. there's a lot missing. But there's a lot that are really, and we're not going to be able to go through each of these. Sure. So I'm going to have to jump through a little bit. Sure. Um, let me jump you ahead to uh, Nickel Queen, okay. which is 1971. Yep. This was um, again one of those really early efforts of Australian film. It was. Nickel Queen was shot. At, at, um, at, uh, in Australia, obviously, but shot by Fauna Productions. Fauna Productions was a company started by John McCallum, who was a famous English actor, and his wife, Googie Withers, started this company. Who was Australian, but she was a big star in England. Correct, yeah. yes. And they came here and, and they, they formed this company called Fauna, and Fauna made Skippy. That was their first big series, mm. and it was very, very successful. And I mixed for them then um, a series called um, Barrier Reef, that had uh, George Assang in it, um, guitar playing fellow, and uh, that was, um, you know, scuba bubbles and diving and pearling and all sort of stuff. Yeah. And then we mixed a series, again for Fauna, called um, oh, Boney. The Boney was detective. big at the time. It Boney was. and Skippy were very important series. Ab absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, then the same company made Nickel Queen, because at that time the mining boom was on and there was a lot of talk about, you know, corrupt people, you know, whatever, whatever. And so we mixed Nickel Queen at our transa. And that was the first thing I mixed, an important thing I mixed, feature-wise anyway, that was on the new Magnatech um, system. Magnatech was the system that allowed you to stop and start and go back and pick up and start re-recording on 35 mils. So you didn't have to mix live, effectively. Well, no, that's right, you could stop. Yeah. But prior to that, you did 10 minutes in a run. A 10-minute reel of film mm. was 1,000 feet of 35 mil. And once you started, you had to go all the way through. You went through it all, right. absolutely. It was, it was quite exciting because you'd get to, you know, seven and a half minutes in and you'd, you'd be sweating in the path because you'd think, <laughs> just what the... What does this bloody go to? You know, oh, that's right, it's, it's the car crash, you know, and you... <laughs> I hope I don't screw this up at the start all over again. <laughs> well, you, you went back to the start, absolutely. Yeah. So that, they bought... Um, Channel 7 bought a Magnatech um, system and so did the ABC. They were the only ones that had them initially. And that was a very, very big um, deal. Um, made in America, obviously. In fact, the, the, the um, Magnatech system won an Academy Award. It was the first time you could actually stop recording, roll back, roll forward, and hit record again, mm. and pick up. And it also was the first time you went to multi-track. Because prior to that, even, the, even with this thing about when I'm mixing, you can't see around corners or, or whatever. They were not only mixed in 10 minute runs, you had to get right for 10 minutes, yeah. went to one track. That all, that, music effects, dialogue, everything was on one track. So um, the Magnatec gear allowed you to record dialogue on one track, music on one track, and effects on a track. So they were blended. So when you played them back, the three tracks level on the one, piece of 35 millimeter film, it, it sounded exactly as you'd done it. But if someone said to you, oh look, can we just change that dialogue slightly, whatever you want to do with it, leave a bit out, put an extra bit in, you only had to go back and re-record on the dialogue track. Music and effects stayed the same. So it's still so it was bouncing a major... down, but all the original tracks were there accessible. Correct, yeah. it, was a, it was a major breakthrough. Yeah. All, all the tracks stayed the same, but also your final mix had a, had a, a mixed dialogue track, so your, your voice and my voice is mixed properly. It had a, a proper effects track, so the backgrounds mm. and, the, and the foregrounds are mixed properly. And the music track was deep in the right place and came in and out. So how, right how many master tracks were there? Three? Just three on three. the final mix, correct. Right. 
And <clears throat> funnily enough, um, I insisted to, to um, Leon Becker, who was the boss of our trance at that time, that we needed a four track machine. And I thought that uh, my thinking there was I'd recorded on music at Natec, and it, they, we went from recording in that time I was there from a single track to a four track. This was tape, mm. this was quarter inch tape. And eventually, of course, they went to six, eight, 16, 24 track. But I thought this four track was what I really needed. They said three. I said, no, no, you need a four track. So Magnatec actually built a special recorder for me <laughs> because I, I didn't understand that. Why did Hollywood. you want the fourth track? Well, I thought, I thought that's what you needed because I, didn't, I hadn't been to Hollywood and seen these Magnatec thing work yet. I went later. Hmm. But I didn't realise they were recording just music, dialogue music and effects. So we had a fourth track, which was fantastic. We would often use it to add a little noise, little sounds here and there without... Um, uh, going, you know, uh, back over the over the mix, but also when we when we had to supply music and effects tracks for foreign versions, international track as they call them, you had to give uh, uh, with your final mix that went with the film if you sold it to France or wherever, um, you had to give a track that had everything on it bar the bar the dialogues. Yeah, so they could do their own dialogue. Yes, correct. Yeah. So we were able to use that fourth track often for something that might be a little bit strange as in foreign, foreign dialogue in an Aussie picture, mm. we'd put that on the fourth track. They could make up their own mind about that. They right. could redub that if they wanted to, or leave it there if it was an Italian global. Which is still the practice to this day. In sure. Fact, you know, when you do an M&E track, you'll often include a foreign language track. Yes. Let's say part of it's an indigenous language or something. Sure. Even though it's technically an English language film. Sure, that's and they right. Can choose to subtitle or leave it alone or, or dub so, it if they so want. So we did that by pure fluke, because yeah. coming out of radio and coming out of like recording music, I thought four tracks was the next thing after one track. <laughs> it was the only well, one in the music made. world it was. Sure. I mean, that's where I come from, you know, from the sure. music world. Sure, sure. It was in not, the mid-60s, once you get to about 60, mm. 6, 67, four track, then yeah. you just say, just by the mid-70s, we've gone into 24 track and beyond. Sure. In those 10 years, it was a massive leap in technology. Sure. Mm. So we had a really good little system by fluke <laughs> at our transa. But that was a big, big deal. You can imagine the difference in a recording that you could stop, start and pick up again and that you're recording, you were mixing. We put a thousand cycle tone on the front of each of those three tracks. So when that track went to someone else to play, they lined the three tones up on track A, track B, track C. And the dialogue, music, and effects played That's exactly the 1K as it should. Yeah, yeah, one K tone, nine thousand hertz. <laughs>